Hey friends, let's talk a little bit about the jQuery syntax. Now the reason jQuery was invented was simply to give web designers and web developers like you and me an easy but powerful way to use JavaScript. Because, you know, we've been playing around with JavaScript in the previous section and although we only touched on kind of the basics, I wanted to jump into jQuery because uh, that's really what you're gonna be using as a web developer and a web designer. You know, you can use JavaScript for certain things and it's good to know the basics and the foundation, but in all uh, reality, and uh, to be totally truthful, you're going to be using jQuery, uh, and that's you're not going to be using JavaScript, uh, plain vanilla JavaScript. Now, as you probably saw, JavaScript kind of has a bit of a complicated syntax. It's a uh, it's a bit long, and it's a lot to remember, and it just seems a little clunky. Now, some web developers uh, may disagree with me, and they may really truly love JavaScript, and that's cool. Um, but I love jQuery and a lot of web developers really love jQuery. So jQuery is a library that is built on top of JavaScript and therefore JavaScript is at the heart of jQuery and everything jQuery does is essentially just JavaScript, uh, just coming at it from a different language, so to speak. That being said, the syntax of jQuery is easier and simpler than plain vanilla JavaScript. Now, before we get started, I want you to go ahead and um, create a new file called syntax.html and copy what I've got in here. I've got the basic structure. I've linked up a normalize.css and styles.css in a CSS folder. Now, over here in my file tree, you can see I have a CSS folder with normalize and styles.css. So go ahead and copy over normalize from a previous uh, lecture uh, that we worked on with CSS and put it in there, add a styles.css. And you're gonna wanna add some styles in here. Uh, and now if you don't wanna just spend time just pausing and copying out all this stuff, uh, you can just download this specific, uh, the, this these course files. Because uh, at the beginning of this section, I would have provided all of the course files for you to download, like I usually do, and these would have been included. So you could just go ahead, find that final course files folder, and pull in the files. Otherwise, you could just pause and add these styles. And same deal for the syntax.html. You can go ahead and just copy this, or you can uh, pull it out from the course files, the final course files. And so basically what we're going to want to do is play around with this HTML. That's what we're going to, that's why we have this here. So just a quick rundown. We got our HTML here. We got, uh, we linked up normalize and styles.css. We of course have our CDN and our local version of uh, jQuery and then a script down here in the JS folder. And in the script.js, we, you know, we already added that. Uh, and I commented out the hello alert because we won't be needing that every time the page refreshes. And now that you're up to speed, we're gonna, we're gonna jump a little bit more in here. Uh, and as we briefly covered in a previous lecture, all jQuery code must be contained within this specific snippet of code. Now this is called the document ready event. In its fullest syntax, it actually looks like this, like this. So document.ready function. But the, the people at jQuery created a shorthand version, which is just what we've been we're using is just uh, money sign, parentheses, function, open, close parentheses, uh, curly braces, closing parentheses, semicolon. And in between that document ready event, that's where you have your jQuery code or your jQuery methods. And the point of the document ready event is to prevent jQuery from loading before the entire document is finished loading. Now, you don't want to try and perform jQuery on an element in the browser that hasn't even loaded yet, right? Like an image. If you put an image and it takes a couple seconds to download and you already have your jQuery, uh, you know, trying to resize it or remove it or fade it out or whatever, uh, but it's not even there. It's not even in the in the document yet. So you ha this, is, this document ready event is exactly what it sounds like. It waits until the document is ready. And the document is the web page. And this is also why I put the scripts at the footer, uh, at the bottom of the page. Technically, you can put them in the head because the document ready event waits until the, the browser is loaded anyway. But if you have lots of scripts, it's still going to try and load those. Sometimes it takes a while for these two, uh, the document to be loaded. So I like putting it at the bottom. I still stand by that. Anyway, uh, in its simplest form, the jQuery syntax looks like this. So we have the dollar sign to access jQuery or call jQuery. We have a selector, 
within parentheses to grab or select HTML elements, whether it's a uh, ID class, could be an HTML element like a level one heading or a div or an input with the type, an attribute type, uh, and then the, the dollar sign, an action with open closing parentheses and a semicolon. So that is the basic, the basic, basic syntax of jQuery. It's all built around this and it gets more complicated because you can add parameters within these parentheses here and you can add functions in between here and the selectors can be, uh, you can select multiple selectors rather than just one element. So it can, it, it grows from here, but this is the, the bare bones, basic, simplest syntax of jQuery. And so here's some real world examples of the syntax in action. So I'm going to remove this and I'm going to show you the HTML page that we're going to be working with. So we have here jQuery syntax, paragraph tag, a box, so a div with the ID of box, and a div with the class of thing, and then a button that we can actually click. And let's play around with this. So let's start off by just saying, remember the, the syntax. So in parentheses, sorry, in strings, uh, single or double, doesn't matter, I'm going to select the box. And it's using the CSS syntax here. So uh, ID box, so you don't have to, you know, type in class equals box or anything. Just uh, ID box dot hide. So this is a jQuery method. It's just the hide method and it will hide the box. So let's see. There you go. It just hid the box when the document was loaded. You see how it kind of flashes there when I refresh. Sometimes it takes longer. That's because it's waiting for the document to load and then it hides the box. You can also, let's, uh, let's do something else. Let's say dot thing. So that's the class of thing fade out. And you can see here in brackets, it's, it's uh, already knows the jQuery syntax. So that helps, helps me out. Uh, if I forget something, see how that faded out there. It's still got the outline because of brackets. Let me remove that. Okay. Try again. See how that faded out. Now, uh, another thing we could do is we can select a level one heading, just an element straight up. We don't have to add IDs or classes. And we can do the CSS method. And in here, we can pass uh, a couple extra parameters to do the CSS. So color in strings, comma, and then uh, the value for that property. Color blue. See how the, it is blue now? So you can also do CSS. Now let's make something happen when you click the button using what's called the click method. So I'm gonna select the button within strings here. And then I'm gonna use the click method. But in here, I need to say function, and then open and closing parentheses, and then an opening curly brace. Do a couple returns for some space, a closing curly brace, making sure everything's closed, and then a parentheses at the very end of that entire method. So if selecting the button, when you click the button, perform a function open closing curly brace and here is where you do your code so this won't do anything when you load until you click that button and then now what we can do is do some more jquery so let's do let's select the box and do fade out again but over the course of 1000 milliseconds so you just have to say 1000 inside the parameter here as a parameter so save that and let's Refresh, it's not doing anything until we click. See how I removed that? Pretty cool, hey? And so this is the basic idea behind jQuery and its syntax. While I'll be covering a lot of what jQuery can do for you over the next uh, couple sections, it's probably a good idea that you bookmark the jQuery documentation webpage as it'll be always be super helpful to you while you're coding jQuery. And you can find the jQuery documentation at jQuery.com and then just click on API documentation or you can go straight to the source by going api.jQuery.com and it has everything here. So you can, uh, you can scroll through and see, you know, what sort of methods are available to you and different events, but this might be totally foreign to you uh, if you have never done jQuery before and that's okay because that's why we have uh, this course. We're going to be covering a lot of jQuery and this will look a bit more uh, helpful to you. And so yes, hang in tight. We've got a lot more jQuery and see you in the next lecture.